Good evening. My name is Amanda Colon. I'm running for Circuit Court Judge in Group 21. Thank you very much for inviting us to this event. It's lovely. A little bit about me personally. I've lived in this area, Pinellas Pasco, since I was three years of age. When my mother became a trial clerk over 30 years ago, we didn't have daycare, and I went to the courthouse every summer and I watched her do trials and hearings, and that's where my love of the courtroom started. I have over 13 years experience in courtrooms. I started as a prosecutor where I handled everything from misdemeanors to murder, spent seven days, uh, excuse me, seven months in the domestic violence unit. From there, I went on to the Attorney General's office where I was in charge of criminal appeals, state appeals from Pasco County down to Naples. I was also in charge of defending the constitutionality of the Jimmy Rice Sexually Violent Predator Act. As part of my job, I broke down and analyzed hundreds of jury trials, argued before the Second District Court of Appeal, and submitted argument to the Florida Supreme Court. For the last eight years, I've had my private practice. I'm board certified in marital and family law. Only 6% of attorneys in Florida are board certified in any area. I'm a Florida Supreme Court certified family mediator, where I help people resolve their cases in an impartial and neutral manner. I volunteer in my community. Please pick up my brochure. See all the many ways I've seen my serve my community in both a charity um, avenue and professionally. What I'm looking to do right now is bring efficiency, integrity, and respect to the courtroom. As a business owner, I understand the importance of delivering a high level of service along with efficiency. I've gone above and beyond in every position and job I've had, and I'm willing to work hard for you as your next circuit court judge. All right, when I reviewed your email last night, there were one or two that I'm glad that you did prepare the audience for because part of that question I am uncomfortable with answering and because this has been a dream of mine since I'm a little girl, I'm coming nowhere near that line. I'm not gonna risk it. But I can tell you what the court system has done to try and ease that. We have developed specialty courts. So now we have drug court, we have medical court, we have um, in juvenile delinquency, a whole subset of juvenile arbitration and other ways of dealing with some of these issues that come up. In drug court, there are a lot of, there's a lot of talk about victimless crimes and things of that nature. And so people who have not committed other crimes are sent there and they have the chance to do their rehabilitation and their therapies and things that they need to do. <laughs> the other very, very important cross-section, and the Sixth Circuit actually led the way on this, we were the guinea pigs, is Unified Family Court. Now, Unified Family Court handles all family matters under one umbrella so that if there's an injunction, a violence issue, and maybe a child abuse or neglect issue, along with a family law issue like a divorce, one judge hears all of them together because you can imagine what could happen if you had three different divisions making rulings for one poor family. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Since I have opened my practice, and actually when I left as a prosecutor, obviously we've seen a rise in the prescription pill epidemic, and it does touch a lot of our cases. As a family law practitioner, I can tell you that it touches a tremendous amount of my cases. If you sit in, in the Unified Family Courtroom Division one day, that's pretty much all you're going to hear all day long. So we do need to start thinking a little bit outside the box and offering some alternatives for our nonviolent offenders. All right, I'm going to get up here and I'm going to agree with Phil. I think the question itself, in my, in my personal opinion, doesn't necessarily have an influence on how I would be as a judge, but I will tell you this, reminiscing back from when I was leaving the prosecutor's office, when I was there, we were prosecuting a lot of uh, crimes, possession of cocaine, possession of heroin, and just as I was leaving, we started to see different types of information being filed, possession of hydrocodone and oxycontin, and I remember as prosecutors very clearly looking at each other going, what is this? Why is this happening all of a sudden, and why is it happening in rampant numbers, and why are they people coming in that we don't typically see? We were seeing elderly women being prosecuted for forgery, for forgery on prescriptions because they had been in car accidents and then were hooked on medication, and we were now prosecuting them. And unfortunately, drug court didn't exist back then, but when Judge Bat did institute that, that was a wonderful program that really changed PASCO. I will say that the rise is crazy. It, it hasn't stopped, and the pills have only made it easier. I do a lot of speaking in high schools, 
And when the teachers aren't around and the kids are honest with you, and you start talking to them about their own personal usage or their access to these pills, it's really frightening. But criminalizing it and continuing to have this war on drugs, I don't believe is going to be the end all effective answer. We need to start looking other places for that. So. Good evening again. Thank you for the opportunity to come out. More about me is available on my website, www.amanda4judge.com. I would love to answer your questions. My email is amanda4judge at gmail.com. I invite you to go ahead and look into a little bit more of my background, specifically the balance that I would bring to the bench, my breadth of experience, as well as my depth of experience. That said, I'm going to follow up. Laura, I've got three girls who are going to get a real kick out of hearing their names on the internet. So hello, Bianca, Isabella, and Melena. Mommy loves you, and I'm coming home now. <laughs>